Hello everyone. In this part of the healing of oral wounds, we will be discussing about gingivectomy healing and extraction socket healing. Gingivectomy is a procedure in which the gingiva is resected in order to eliminate the pocket. Gingival contouring leads to a raw wound which generally heals by secondary intention. It has been observed that with or without the packs, the healing is not altered. However, the patient may be more comfortable with an obtendant pack present. Because of the stimulatory effect on fibroblasts, dilantin sodium seems to heal the gingival wound much more faster. After the clot that is formed, it gets converted into a grayish color because of the presence of delicate connective tissue formation in two days. Epithelialization begins as early as two days, which gets better and thickened in four to eight days. In four days, the polymorphonuclear leukocytes, that is the neutrophils, and the capillaries get organized, which later gets completed by 10 days. In 10 to 14 days, decent thickness of epithelium of 8 to 10 cell thick, along with disappearance of the inflammatory cells are seen. This usually heals within 3 weeks. The extraction socket healing is a slightly different scenario. This is mainly because of the regeneration of bone that is required. Immediately after extraction of the wound, the capillaries that are present in the apical portion of the tooth are severed, giving rise to blood accumulating in the socket. In case of a non-traumatic extraction, you will be able to see the crest of the alveolus on the buccal and the lingual side as well as the mesial and the distal side, which will enclose the clot. This clot is supported on the superior portion by the flaps of the gingiva. These flaps support the clot from coming out. That is one of the reasons why negative pressure should be avoided following extraction of a tooth. The negative pressure which may be caused due to a sucking action like the use of a straw to drink juice can dislodge this particular clot. Within 24 hours you can see that the RBCs are intermixed with lot of WBCs especially neutrophils and this fibrin that is formed forms a scaffold for the regeneration of the granulation tissue. The granulation tissue which gets formed within a week shows lot of fibroblasts. These spindle shaped fibroblasts, they are the very first phase of granulation tissue, some of which may also be endothelial cells, which may get organized later on to form capillaries as you see in this figure. The formation of the capillaries along with fibroblasts leads to differentiation of bone forming cells in the second week, which results in osteoblast formation. These osteoblasts that are formed leads to the formation of osteoid in the third week. At this phase, because of the trauma, the osteoclastic resorption of the socket happens to a certain degree, which gets refilled by the third and the fourth week. The clot is completely replaced by granulation tissue in the third week, with the epithelium showing complete formation around the clot surface. If the suture has been placed in this area, you will be able to see the completion much earlier. By fourth week, there is continued deposition of bone that you see here, mostly a woven bone, which later on gets converted into a lamellar bone with osteoblast rimming the periphery of the bone. This radiographic distinction is usually seen within three months and the bone formation continues to happen up to six months of time. One of the common complications that is associated with traumatic extractions by inexperienced surgeons or due to disintegration of the clot is dry socket, also called as alveolar osteitis or alveolitis sicca dolorosa. It is called dolorosa because of the increased association with pain. This is predominantly occurring in patients who have pre-surgical infection, inadequate irrigation use during extraction, use of tobacco and use of oral contraceptives. The pathogenesis of the normal healing process involves the formation of a clot which gets organized to a granulation tissue. 
maturation into bone. This is the normal process. But in cases where individuals lose this particular clot, maybe because of a bacterial infection, where the stimulation of the plasminogen to convert into plasmin leads to fibrinolysis of the clot, leading to disintegration of the clot, may lead to dry socket formation. The dry socket usually appears as a grayish discoloration of the bone associated with severe pain, which is more common in traumatic extraction, usually seen in 30% of the impacted third molar associated extractions. The patient experiences fetid odor, which is experienced three to four days post extraction and has a dirty gray clot, which is lost and the bare bone is seen, which is very tender on probing. Usually, we evaluate and take an x-ray to locate and eliminate any other causes of pain. The site is irrigated for soothing the area. A pack of obtendant, usually iodoform with eugenol, may be packed inside for stimulating granulation tissue formation and formation of the bone. We have to eliminate the high-risk patients, especially individuals with diabetes, history of infection and intraoperative irrigation with antibiotics will be useful in preventing dry socket. Another scenario which may occur associated with post-extraction healing is absence of bone formation. There will be rubbery socket filling by fibrotic tissue and the radiolucency will persist even after six months. This is mainly because of deposition of collagen bundles with reduced amount of blood vessels and little or no ossification. Usually, excision of this area with induction of bleeding may stimulate bone repair. So, this was about healing of gingivectomy and extraction socket with a note on dry socket. The next lecture will be on healing of fracture.